Hulk Day. Okay, hi. My name's Pete, senior keeper here at the Cape May County Zoo. On today's episode, we're going to talk about camels. Here we have one of each of the true camels. Walter here is a Bactrian camel from the Gobi Desert or uh, North Central China, Mongolia, originally. Not him personally, his, his people. Whereas the dromedary or Arabian camel, represented here by Marty, they were originally from the uh, Arab Peninsula, Middle East, Northern Africa, Southwest Asia. Now, people always kind of get the two confused and they remember the names. Uh, the easiest way to remember is the dromedary camel begins with a D. Okay, put a D on its side, it has one hump. Bactrian begins with a B, and if you put a B on its side, it has two. That's how I remember it anyway. Okay, the, the main differences between the two camels, uh, obviously, is the number of humps. Also, the size. You can see they're shaped differently. There's the Bactrian camel is a little stockier. They don't get quite as high, but they might be a little longer in the body. Arabian or dromedary camel gets very high, especially right here at the hump. They get up to or slightly over seven feet tall, whereas I won't be able to reach them at some point. And uh, little Marty here, I mean Walter, will hopefully stay of a size when I can manipulate him a little better. Now camels have evolved in a rather harsh climate. They're desert animals. They live in really dry, not just hot, but also cold regions. So they can actually subsist on very, very poor diet from that. Um, dromedary camels will eat lots of things called salt brush and dry browse and the bark off trees and anything that they can find. Things that most normal cattle couldn't even live off of. They've also adapted to save water. Their digestive system and kidneys are very, very efficient at reabsorbing the water into their bodies. Their urine is very concentrated and their, even their red blood vessel, red blood cells are oval shaped so that when the bodies are dehydrated they can actually flow more easily through their veins. Some of the other cool things is the uh, you see the big bony ridge over the eyes actually helps protect them from the sun. Their nostrils can be closed to protect them from high winds and sand. They have partially prehensile lips. So they can use them like little fingers to pull out the, the succulent pieces of leaves and thing in amongst the thorns and dry brush and, and branches of the things they're eating. Now camels are ruminants, similar to regular cattle, uh, deer and other animals like that. That means they have multi-chambered stomachs. So they'll They'll eat their food the first time. They'll chew whatever plants they can find, chew them up a little bit, swallow them. They'll go down into their first stomach, which is a big fermentation vat. So that bubbles and the bacteria work on that for a little bit. Then they cough it back up into their mouths and chew it a second time. This is called chewing the cud. I heard cows do that. Once that's chewed up a second time, They'll swallow it and then get digested just like we digest our food. Now, you can also see that um, how hairy these guys are at the moment. This is their winter coat. Um, this 
this is the time of year where they actually start shedding. So every day I come in here and I spend a little time doing this. And as you can see, we're gonna have a never ending supply of hair. So young Walter here, it's gonna go from looking like Chewbacca to looking like Gollum by summer. And he'll have a few wisps of hair on his head and he'll look practically naked. He, he won't lose all his hair, but it's very, very fine and short for his winter coat. So this obviously lightens it up a little bit, makes it a little cooler to, uh, to exist in the sun in the summer. Now they keep tufts of hair up on top of their humps and their humps are made out of a fat matrix held together with elastic um, connective tissue. Having these big fatty furry humps on top of their backs, not only can they metabolize that in, in times of uh, famine or lo no water, but it also insulates them from the heat from the sun. The long legs keep their bodies away from the hot desert sands. So you get a little air cooling underneath there as well. The camels have been domesticated for literally thousands of years. Um, they think that some of the first domestication has, been, has taken place about 6,000 years ago, uh, the dromedaries, and there's evidence that they've been used since then. In fact, the dromedary camel is no longer considered a wild animal. They've all been domesticated. The only uh, pseudo wild populations are called feral, from animals that have either been released or escaped from domestic uh, populations. Camels are herd animals. That means that they're very uh, personable. Well, they like attention, they like company. They don't like to be by themselves. So they spend a lot of time touching each other, nosing each other, smelling each other. Um, so it's, you know, it's always good to have more than one animal together to keep them occupied. Now the thing with uh, camels is they are working animals. They, they need to be occupied. Um, otherwise all they want to do is eat and get fat. So unfortunately the only job our camels have is to kind of look good for the public and entertain us. Um, so we try to find things to do. Uh, we give them lots of browse to, to nibble on. They have a salt right? hay feeder over there. We can't give them lots of toys because they tend to be kind of destructive and it makes them aggressive, which is not a good thing. But I do work with them a lot. Um, we take them for walks. We train them to follow along. So your challenge during this time of quarantine and social, social isolation is to think of jobs that you can do around the house to help out the family, your herd. Thanks from uh, Walter and Marty, that's all I got.